There's something a bit special about sitting in row one of an aircraft, isn't there? Sometimes these front row seats are a little better than the rest, but have you ever flown on an aircraft where row one was a lot better than the rest? And I mean a lot better. JetBlue just started service with this fabulous Mint Studio Suite, the biggest and best seat across the Atlantic to London. Come with me as I check out this brand new product and review the seats, the eats and what's not so sweet about this unique business class. Join me for this remarkable overnight flight from New York JFK to London Heathrow. Enjoy the video. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. JetBlue launched their first long-haul transatlantic service to London in August and now serve Heathrow and Gatwick from their JFK base. Operating from Terminal 5, the terminal's quirkiest feature is this outside terrace, a pretty unusual thing to find at an American airport. From here you can spy the iconic TWA hotel, JFK's control tower, and one of the most important things if you're an upstart airline on the London route, keeping an eye on the competition at the next terminal. The other thing that's really kind of cool about this space is it just gives me a space to talk with freedom without a mask outside in the fresh air and to be honest it's absolutely fantastic it's about five degrees above zero celsius that is american friends and it is a lovely crisp evening i've been in the us for about four weeks now and i've had an amazing time and i'm really looking forward to going home it's the end of november it's the day before thanksgiving here in the us and i am super looking forward to flying JetBlue. Since it was founded, JetBlue has tried to do things differently from the legacy carriers that ply the same routes that they do. Now, sometimes that's a really good thing, and sometimes it's not so good. Here's what I mean. I've had the privilege of flying all of JetBlue's competition on the London route, from Virgin's Silky Upper Class, to the British Airways Club Suite, to American's 777-200, to Delta One on the 767, to my personal favourite, United's gorgeous Polaris product. Now all of those are legacy airlines with proper first or business class through ticket connections domestically in the USA. Apart from a small number of longer domestic routes, JetBlue offers an entirely economy class service, so you likely won't be in business class when you connect. And what's more, you'll actually be in sort of basic economy. Yes, even if you spend $2,000 on a ticket from, say, Fort Lauderdale to London, your economy class leg will have no priority boarding and no priority seat selection. The front several rows of JetBlue's domestic planes come with a bit more legroom, and this is really where their full fare $2,000 customers should get to sit, right? Well, no. JetBlue wanted me to pay an extra $67 to sit here, which, by the way, is not only steep, but more than the cheapest Fort Lauderdale to New York fare. Anyway, I was sat right down the back and couldn't help but feel it's not really what I expected. But, Luckily for me, the airline had organized a human-sized seat warmer. I think there's a nice seat. Here we go. Yep, 33 F. Bear in mind, also, JetBlue isn't in a major alliance and has a weaker frequent flyer program than the competition, and also it doesn't operate any lounges at all. So yeah, you've guessed it. One of the reasons I'm outside talking to you here is because there's no lounge for me. But let's dip inside and we'll find out why I actually quite like Terminal 5 here at JFK and why it's no real hardship spending a little bit of time here. Yeah, so even though there's no lounge here and not even one you can get into using your priority pass, Terminal 5 is actually not bad at all. If you want to kill a couple of hours, there are a few decent places to eat or grab some drinks. So I'm going to be eating on the plane and um, don't judge me but I've had no lunch today and it's 5pm. I noticed my flight was inbound and landing from Los Angeles. By the way, you guessed it, this special product is on select New York to Los Angeles flights too. 
And here she is, JetBlue's new A321 long-range narrow-body jet that will take us all the way to London Heathrow tonight. All JetBlue aircraft carry names, and ours is named for JetBlue's former chairman, Joel Peterson. Thankfully, on this main international leg of my ticket, I do get priority boarding. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN. Surfshark is part of my travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption, and the quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. It's so annoying when you can't access some of your favorite content overseas. Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN, select an appropriate spoof location, and hey presto, access to your favorite TV show is restored. It's dead easy, and it costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially because Surfshark have a special improved deal for the holidays. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and now four months extra for free of Surfshark VPN. All right, here we go. Flight 007 to London. I'm flying JetBlue's Mint Studio Suite. I cannot wait to find out what it's like. And here it is. The first row of these JetBlue planes have these unique studio suites, which for an extra $299 on top of the regular business class fare, come with this much extra space over the regular seats and several other features which we'll look at later. All the seats are laid out in a 1-1 herringbone configuration and have a window and aisle access, and a closing privacy door, arguably the perfect arrangement. It looks like the angle makes it hard to see out of the window at these seats, but trust me, it isn't that bad. What a fantastic seat. It's important to say that the studio is not an extra class of service, but rather just a better type of seat. All the other seats are still great and still get the same food and service as the front row studio. The studio is, however, much, much bigger. In fact, it's the largest business class seat on the London to New York route. We'll look in detail at the seat after takeoff, but first, the all important seat feature so many business class seats leave out are the individual air vents. Yes, another win for JetBlue. I'll have a mimosa, this is a mimosa, right? Thank you so much. If you know me, you know that I tend not to drink on overnight flights, but I'm making an <laughs> exception today. This is a mimosa, cheers. This is just an incredible seat. I've seen so many pictures online of what the seat looks like, but actually being in it, it is huge. There is so much space up here in seat 1A, uh, the Mint Studio Suite, and hopefully uh, this 360 camera gives you an idea of the sense of space you get here. That's one mimosa down. And a second one before takeoff. I should hopefully sleep well.
we take off and turn left around on ourselves and climb up and over JFK, getting a fantastic view in the process. Today's flight takes 6 hours and 41 minutes to travel the 3,451 miles to London. Incidentally, the A321 cruises slightly slower than most wide bodies, so our journey will take about 10 to 15 minutes longer than it would on, say, an A350 or 777. JetBlue has free Wi-Fi, which puts it way ahead of all the competition on the route, and it works from gate to gate. I was able to tweet out videos and update my social media from the ground. And thanks to all of you that tracked my flight, by the way. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Paul underscore winging it if you want to follow me. Right to the seat. This extra space is a seat in case you want to invite a companion up to sit with you. They even get their own power socket and table. As well as a wireless charger, you get USB and universal socket ports and a pretty good amount of side storage. By the way, the studio only gets an enlarged 22-inch TV screen, which is in full HD and is the largest of any airline on the London to New York route. Also exclusive to the studio is this mini wardrobe, which contains a small amenity kit and a shoe holder, which contains your slippers. This shoe holder claims to take your shoes, but if you have big feet, it might be a squeeze. Here's the companion table, which can be used to have dinner on if you invite a friend up to your little seat 1A palace. A pretty cool arrangement if you ask me. The main table deploys like this and is pretty sturdy and good quality. Be mindful though that it is a squeeze to get out when it's deployed, which will be a problem in all of the seats, except this studio one, where you can simply move the contents of your table to the companion one and exit. All of the mint seats on this A321 come with a closing door, which, as you can see, closes about 98% of the way. The storage bonanza continues with this little drawer under the TV, which will take a small laptop. And to be honest, there really are very few flaws to this seat. It is beautifully finished and very tasteful, especially on this night flight where the blues really come into their own. Let's look at that amenity kit. It's fairly basic and contains hand sanitizer, lip balm, stain remover, hand cream, lint remover, and this funky pack of JetBlue playing cards. There's also this rather curious second kit, which contains some very left field things like an immune boosting suite and a lip mask, whatever one of those is. There's also earplugs, eye mask, and toothpaste. Finally, JetBlue provides half-decent noise-cancelling headphones. My absolute top tip for travelling transatlantic on these really short mid-life flights is if you're changing into pyjamas, which you should, do it early. Good, thank you very much. My pleasure. Right, this is the mint condition, one of JetBlue's two signature cocktails. Let's give it a whirl. Wow, that is delicious but very strong. 
JetBlue offers full meal service or accelerated options if you want to maximize sleep. Let's have a look. All right, just left US airspace. Less than an hour after takeoff, and I've got my dinner. I cannot wait to see what they've done with the steak. It's a very risky dish to be serving at 30,000 feet. All of JetBlue's food is good. And I've got to be honest, the carrots and cavatelli were both excellent. But the steak, well, it was tasty enough, but here's the risk of ordering beef on a plane. That's too well done for me, and it would be too well done for most people. But the peaches and gelato dessert more than compensated for the steak. It's 5.30 a.m. in London. It's half past midnight New York time. It's time to try and get some sleep with a secret weapon, Italian dessert wine. JetBlue does not offer a mattress pad. It really should, to be honest. But the blanket is versatile and very large, so you won't have it fall off you when sleeping. The seat, of course, converts into a fully flat bed, which I reckon has just over six feet of usable length. JetBlue say that you can starfish in it thanks to the additional side space, but I'm not sure I'd say that. Sure, it's a good bed for a transatlantic crossing, and I've got no problems with it, but it's not exactly a king size at the Ritz, let's keep it real. I'm woken for breakfast about an hour and a half before landing, with dawn just breaking. I wasn't terribly hungry, so I went a bit experimental with my choices. The iced cappuccino was surprisingly good for something made on a plane, and the spicy kiwis, well, let's just say those are an acquired taste. Our northerly route across the Atlantic today took us down the western coast of Britain, past Lothian and the Lake District, and then to London. So, is the studio worth the extra money? I think so, as a one-off. It is the best business class seat flying London to New York and, in my view, has enough extra features to make it a worthwhile upgrade. It's also definitely worth getting served first on such short overnight flights. I normally try to avoid these sorts of punishing red-eye flights, but the JetBlue experience was novel, the service was excellent, and the overall product is so different to the other major competitors on the route. Now for a dose of reality. 
Frequent flyers need to bear in mind JetBlue doesn't offer any lounge access at all, the frequent flyer program is weaker than its alliance competition, and that there's an opportunity cost involved in taking them. That is, you're losing out on the opportunity of lucrative miles earning elsewhere or airline status building if you book with them instead of, say, British Airways. Finally, the connecting experience on JetBlue's domestic network is really weak compared to the big five other airlines on this route. It's not perfect, and it is not going to be a game changer, but still, this is a compelling alternative and will appeal most to people who don't fly very much but who want to do it right when they do. It's going to be really popular with leisure travellers. In fact, my flight was totally full in mint class. I really wanted to take this trip and tolerated a higher price than I normally would and parted with 1,994 US dollars, about 1,500 pounds, for the one-way ticket. But if you're lucky, you can find return fares on some dates next year from London to New York for under 1,200 pounds, about 1,600 US dollars, not including that premium for the studio. Remember to visit surfshark.deals forward slash it for a special deal over the holiday period. 83% off and four extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.